In this video, I'm going to be showing you exactly how to add predecessors in Smartsheet. But before I do so, I do just want to quickly mention something that may be of interest to you. I do have a Smartsheet Fundamentals training course, which was literally created to help you get up and running with Smartsheet, used to all the functionality, and just learning everything uh, as quickly as possible and with a seamless experience. So if that sounds of interest, then check out the link in the description below. But with all of that said, let's delve into adding predecessors. So as you can see here, I have created a new sheet, a dummy data sheet uh, to get us started. So we've got three different tasks here and I've, I've kind of related it back to this video recording just to show you how it works and the concepts involved. So as you'll see here, we've got the schedule, we're scheduling the YouTube video, we're recording it and we're publishing. So naturally, these are reliant on one another. We can't publish a YouTube video until it's been recorded. So we need some predecessors. So what I recommend that you do is you have your sheet in place and I would recommend that you have a couple of starting columns. So make sure this is this is my primary column. Obviously, you will need that. Um, you won't necessarily need this, but you will need a start and an end date. And I've just put in some dummy data. So I've basically said this is on the 5th, uh, Tuesday, the 5th of March. This is Wednesday, the the 6th of March and this is Wednesday the 7th of March and they basically take one day to complete. So what you need to do to add predecessors in Smartsheet, locate your primary column, select it, left click on your mouse, you want to right click and then you want to click on edit project settings. At this point you want to enable dependencies so there's a checkbox just here and once we select that it will, it will come up with this message Duration and predecessor columns have been added to the sheet. And I'm going to press OK. Now, I recommend doing it this way around. You can actually create these other columns. So you can create um, the predecessors and duration columns yourself and then select them in these drop downs. But I find that to be a little bit more convoluted. So as I say, this is the way to do it. It will create them for you and it will pre-select. So everything is in place at this precise moment. So we press OK and you'll notice that the duration column has automatically changed to one day. Now at this point, I'm going to move these columns. So I'm, I'm holding shift on my keyboard to select both of these columns. I'm left clicking on my mouse and I'm dragging all the way over here. I basically want them to be next to the start and end date. So now we need to set up our predecessors. So all you need to do, and I'm going to set up this particular row doesn't require a predecessor because it's the first task in the project, but this row does. We can't record until we're scheduled. So what we're going to do here is click this little pencil icon. Now at this stage, we could put number one in and it will identify the task or alternatively, you could wipe that out um, and you could just put, you could select the task. So what I'm essentially saying here is for row two, we need there to be a predecessor on row one. So essentially it's related to row one. There's a dependency on row one. Now you have four different options to choose from. Finish to start is the main one. It's the one I'm gonna be using in this example. So we can't start, record the YouTube video until the schedule YouTube video has finished. So I'm gonna select that. But there are other options as well. If you're not sure which, which ones to use for yourself, you can always go into Google and just type in um, predecessor types uh, explained or you know predecessor when to use finish to finish etc etc but this is what I want to use in this example lag is essentially the number of days in between until you can start so as an example let's say um, we wanted to schedule our, our video on a Monday and we didn't want to record till a Wednesday we would put one in there so one day there's a one day lag until we can next start but we don't want any lag in this example so I'm going to put in zero so I've selected that as the predecessor. Now here, I'm going to, uh, I need this to be related to the record. So I'm gonna press this button. Again, I'm, this time I'm gonna put row two. It's gonna pull that in. Again, we want finish to start and we don't want a little lag. So if I press okay, so now our predecessors are in place and it will just look, it will just look like a number. Now you can hide this. If you right click, you can, um, you can hide the column if that's a little bit messy or you don't want to see it. You can move it out the way, etc., etc. But the predecessors are now in place. So at this point, we can see them. So if I left click here and then go on to the Gantt view, you'll notice 
our predecessors are in place. This task cannot start until that task is finished. And the beauty of doing this, if I was then to manipulate these tasks, um, so, sorry, I don't want to do that. I've changed the duration of the third task there. But if I was to start playing around with this, so if I was to do, um, let's just change this to 20, let's just change this to 28, and let's just change this to next month at some point. It's changed the duration days, and if I was to go into the Gantt, back again into the Gantt, you'll notice that it's all, it's kind of, it's all connected, and I don't need to play around with anything because the predecessors are in place. So it, it just saves a lot of time. It's really worth setting these up, and as you can see, it doesn't take long. If you did want to take the predecessors and the dependencies off, find your primary column, edit project settings, and then just pretty much uncheck that. So I hope this video was useful. Any questions, comments, feedback, drop them down below and I'll get back to you. And do consider checking out my course if you do want to make the most of Smartsheet. With all that said, hope you have an excellent day.